Hello and welcome back to the workshop. So where do we stand? Well, we've got everything bored out here, which took a lot longer than I had anticipated taking, but we're there. We're ready to fill in the slot and straighten out this neck. So we've, we did the truss rod channel and we've got this block of maple all set up for it. Now we just need to mill it down to the right sizes. So I've already marked out my straight lines for where I need to go. The key to this is because this neck is already bowed, I need to make sure that everything is nice and flat. So the hardest part is going to be cutting this down, keeping it straight, and shaving it down to fit the space that's in the neck. I'm not gonna be able to do a glow up like normal because this is plastic. I'm thinking I'm gonna to have to use a resin or epoxy to put this in place, as well as with the fretboard because I wanna be able to have a flat plane um, plastic here for the fretboard to sit on as well. Which is another thing, I'm going to have to mill down the wenge for the fretboard. But with that, because I already have this neck all mapped out, I'm going to run over the mansa, cut this down, and we'll get to fitting this up. Now that I've got the general shape down, it is partially rounded. I need to make sure to go through with this leveling beam and make sure everything is nice and flat so that when I put it into the neck, it'll help flatten out the neck that's already bowed that's in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and carefully clamp this my vise and make sure everything is nice and square and take off the extra millimeter or two that I left on here just to be safe. But we're awfully close. All right, so I've got everything all fit nice and snug. We've got truss rod running all the way through it. I think all that is left is going to be gluing this in. The one thing I did notice doing a dry fitting of this is that where I cut the fretboard off, it actually sinks lower than where it, everything lines up to be straight. So in order to counteract that, I was thinking of either doing binding on this edge here, but I, I think realistically I'm just going to use these strips of wenge to glue into these channels here to flatten out this surface to have a clean gluing area for my fretboard. Now, because this is injected molded, this is a plastic, so I'm thinking the best route is going to be to epoxy these pieces in to get them all nice and snug. And because my piece is nice and straight, I should be able to press fit this neck into the pocket to straighten everything out. So all that's left is to mix up some epoxy and get it glued in. It's just a waiting game. Unfortunately, this one here takes 72 hours to cure, so I'm not gonna be able to work on it for a few days. But we can start moving ahead to the fretboard. I uh, had to run this through the planer after milling down a smaller board, and I realized that the original fretboard had a taper to it from about 10 millimeters at the very base to about six, seven millimeters at the top. So I'm creating this faux stepped slamp out of some veneers that tapers from two millimeters down to nothing so that hopefully I can mimic the gradual slant in my planer to give that effect all the way across 
before I eventually put the radius on the fretboard. Well, now that I've made it this far and the fretboard is cut roughly to shape, we just need to find the center and start radiusing the board. There's got to be an easier way to find the center. All right, but in all seriousness though, we've got another great tool from Tim Sway, and I can't stress enough how much I have really enjoyed his tools so far. All of the ones that I've been using primarily have been from him, and they have found a spot in my workshop, basically living on my desk. I do have the displays out back here where I've got his square and his other one set up here on my wall. But in all honesty, I hardly put them back. They just kind of sit out here because I have found so many uses for them within my builds. I mean, they're all for measuring and 90% of a guitar build is measuring. So if you want to get one of these, unfortunately the first run has sold out, but I will have a link in the description below. He does say he's going to make more runs of these things. So you'll just have to keep a watch out for when those go back in stock. But I've only just messed around with it a couple times here, but I can already see a wealth of uses for this thing. And much like his other ones, I foresee this thing living on my bench. So keep a watch out for when those go back in stock and get yours. Link in the description. Anyway, back to the build. Alright, so now that we've gotten that far, we need to establish a radius on this fretboard first so that we can then cut our fret slots and install our frets. So, as always, we're going to use the trick with the masking tape and super glue to glue this down to a board so I can easier run my hand plane across it to get that radius started.
got a fretted board. So basically you've seen me do this all before. We're going to trace the outline of the inlays, which I've done in white here on this wing gate because it's much easier to see. And then we're just going to go through with a razor and score on the inner part of our lines to make it the innermost mark. And then I'm just going to kind of chamfer around the edges of those score lines just to deepen the outer pocket, which gives it a stop for me to then go in with my Dremel to get it down to the correct depth. And after that, you can just set your inlays. So I'm going to get chopping away and putting these in. And then this fretboard will just need another sanding and we'll be ready to put it on the guitar. Well, now that we've got the fretboard all inlaid and ready to go and re-radiused back to where it needs to be, I guess the only thing left to do is to glue it onto here. So we're going to finish prepping where our truss rod channel is going to be. So I'm going to tape that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and use a two-part epoxy to glue this down because a lot of this is plastic and I want to give it the best chance to adhere to the plastic. So with that, let's get the tape. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for now because there is still quite a bit more to do on this even though it looks a lot more complete but we'll wait for that epoxy to dry and cure and then we'll get into putting on frets leveling out the frets cleaning it up and cleaning up all the hardware which desperately needs to be done before this can be finally assembled so with that until next time stay tuned and don't forget I now have merch so go click the link in the description and go get yourself some and don't forget to like and subscribe to this video for more content.